Hello and welcome to Citizen Speak. I'm your host, Garrett Martin. Thank you for listening. Um, I want to take a few minutes to talk about how veterans are treated here in America. There's a lot of people who say that we need to support our troops and that we need to take care of our veterans and there's a lot of homeless veterans. That's true. We do need to take care of our veterans. I'm a veteran myself and uh, I've gone through some extremely hard struggles because there's not help out there for veterans when they need help. And most of the time, the programs that are around now, veterans don't know about. They don't know that they can get access to uh, aid for housing or uh, lunch programs at the VA. Uh, There's a lot of things that even the people at the VA don't know that apply because it's just not properly taught. At least at my VA anyway. I don't want to speak for every VA, but the VA that I work for, if you ask about a certain program that the VA is supposed to offer, you have to ask a 20 different people because nobody knows. Um, but the reason why I want to talk about this now is with the refugee crisis that's going on, you have uh, all sorts of people who are saying that, oh, well, we need to help our homeless vets before we help these Syrian refugees. Yeah. I agree that we do need to help the homeless vets, but we also need to help these Syrian refugees. And uh, as somebody who's been near homeless and nearly starved to death, I agree. We do have a huge problem with the vets that we have to take care of. But we've always had this problem. And all all the wars that we go through or all the crises that happen there's always people who say we need to support our troops. What does that mean to you when you hear that? Or if you're saying support our troops, what does that actually mean to you? For me, when I say it, it means that I'm going to try to find homeless people in my area. And if they need a ride to the VA, I'm going to take them to the VA. Or if they need a meal, I'm going to get them a meal to eat. If you say support the troops, actually mean support the troops. Because you have Congress who, right now we have the laziest Congress that we've ever had. And they just recently had the chance to improve the benefits of the veterans. Guess what they chose? They chose not to help the veterans. The same exact people who are saying support the troops are the same exact people who have the power to help the vets but don't help the vets. So, if you're really saying that we have so many homeless people here in our country, or we have so many homeless people in our country, take action in your own community. Go to a soup kitchen, or try to find people who need to go to the VA. Uh, It might be a little bit difficult for you, but if you really want to help, then you got to do some work. And everybody has to do their part because there's a lot of vets who get frustrated with the VA and they just don't go anymore. I was one of them. When I first got out of the army, uh, I was fairly young and every time I went into the VA, everybody would always look at me like, oh, what's this guy doing here? He doesn't need the VA. So when I would try to get appointments at the VA, they would send me over to different buildings and it turns out that my appointment wasn't in those buildings or if it was the person at the desk who was taking me in told me go to a different area and then after my appointment had already passed i would come back to that building and say no i've been told by multiple people that this is the building and then sure enough the lady will look me up in the computer again and there's my appointment she goes oh well sorry you missed your appointment you got to come back another day at this point in time i didn't have a job I had been looking for work and I had a job at one point, but I got let go because of the medical condition that I have. And uh, I don't have money to keep coming back to the VA. And at the time, I didn't live far enough from the VA to collect any money for gas to go to the VA. So I'm using whatever little gas that I have to get over to the VA 
and then that's that. And I didn't have a car payment because I had bought my car used and I paid everything in cash. So it's not like I have car payments to deal with or big cell phone payments or anything like that. Um, I'm just dwindling down any little penny that I have trying to get the health care that I deserve. And there's so many vets who go through this cycle. And uh, for me, I know that I had a bunch of friends who went in and uh, there's a bunch of upperclassmen and lowerclassmen that I know who also went into the army or navy and uh, I try to keep tabs on some of those people that I was close with so that way when they do get out, I can direct them over to exactly who's going to help in my local VA. And uh, I, I went for about six months to the VA until I couldn't go anymore, until I financially couldn't make it over to the VA anymore. And I didn't know that there was a service that could have picked me up at my house and brought me over to the VA and, and taken me home. I had no idea that that existed. And uh, at this time, when I got out of the, the VA, I, uh, when I got out of the army, um, I had weighed, golly, what was it? About 250. <laughs> and uh, I dwindled down to about 145 because I couldn't eat. I had only enough money to barely buy myself a bag of potatoes every month. And that was about it. I, I dwindled down to basically a skeleton. And uh, I had no idea that any programs existed where I could have shown up to the VA and gotten the cantina food or if I needed help with my housing there was options for that and uh, when I had gotten let go from the factory I had applied for unemployment because I was let go to a medical condition and the government said no sorry you don't qualify for unemployment I hadn't even been out of the army for a year and I got let go from a place for a medical condition that developed in the army and I don't qualify for unemployment. And then if you try to apply for social security disability because the VA disability money hasn't even started to get in the process yet, too bad, too bad. It doesn't, it doesn't matter for you. You're just somebody, you're just somebody lost in the system at this point. And, uh, there's so many vets who have similar stories to what I have that if you're truly wanting to help the troops, there's so much that you can do. And uh, it's just a shame that there are 50,000 plus vets in the United States who are homeless, who don't know where the next meal is coming from, or who don't know that they can get the free health care at the VA. They don't know any of that. And so they just sit there and they wither away. And then you have people who say, oh, well, we need to help the vets. But yet they sit inside of their comfy, warm homes and don't get off their asses and help the people who actually need help. Politicians, us vets are not here for you to use as a bargaining chip. We are not here for you to leverage against any cause that's decent, that you wish to destroy. That's not what I'm here for. So if you want to use me as a puppet, I'm going to go tell you to fuck yourself. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, my name is Garrett Martin. I'm your host here at Citizen Speak. Make sure you find me at, on Twitter at SitSpeak. That's C-I-T-Z Speak. Uh, thank you so much for listening, guys. Have a great rest of the day.